Hello everyone, I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested, I will leave my link to purchase this book on Amazon in the description box below. For those of you that follow my channel, you know that I have lived below the poverty line for my entire adult life in order to reach my financial goals. Poverty is a very serious subject, subject that should not be taken lightly. Over 25 million seniors are financially insecure and are living under what could be termed as below the federal poverty level. Seniors are struggling with rising health care costs, housing costs, lack of transportation, inadequate nutrition, and no savings. Many people have to choose between food or medication. With rising costs of childcare, food, and housing, families all across the United States of America are struggling to pay their bills and stay afloat. Many of these families do not have enough money to cover a $400 emergency. Without the proper financial education, fortitude, and determination, small financial emergencies like a flat tire or new shoes can send a family that was already on the edge into financial turmoil. This not only affects the wallet, but it can also affect the mental well-being of every individual. Once the mental well-being has been compromised, it can spiral into the physical well-being of anyone going through these horrible situations. If you start early enough and you prepare yourself financially, you can make it on a budget that is so low that others consider it to be extreme. The freedom that living well below our means brings cannot be measured. Freedom from stress, freedom from unwanted responsibilities, freedom from sleep, sleepless nights, and freedom from owing anyone anything. In this video, I will show you a tour of my small 900 square foot home, my two cars, and at the end of this video, we will go over my monthly expenses. I will show you how it can be done if you are creative, resourceful, and are not afraid of getting your hands dirty. But because this is such a serious subject, and it makes me feel good to make you feel good, we must first pause for a brief comedic food porn intermission. All right, everybody, I have my back up against the door um, and I think we will move from right to left and I'll try and give you some money saving tips as I go along. So the I keep over here all of my junk mail uh, so that I can use it for kindling in the fireplace. Right there I have a Roku box which gives me thousands and thousands of free movies and TV shows. I do not pay for cable TV. Over here I have the fireplace when I first moved in it was non-functional. This is a $67,000 house. It has no garage, no driveway, a very, very small postage stamp size lot, less than one tenth of an acre, uh, which is a really great way to save some money. Among my bills, um, I do make sure that I donate. I donate to the Animal Rescue Foundation and I donated my entire stimulus check. And for those of you who do not believe me, here is tribute gifts for $250 or more. And here is my name, and I made it in honor of my previous dog, Simba. That was my check. So um, very, very small house. This was originally 650 square feet plus a garage. And then the garage was converted, it was converted into a duplex, and now it has been converted into a two bed, two bath house. This is pretty much it. I mean, I'm standing, here's the front door, and I'm standing at it, and it's, it's very, very simple. I could actually go quite a bit smaller if I wanted to, um, and I might in the future. The only thing that I have bought new is the sofa, the kitchen table, and my bed. There are two beds, but I only bought mine. This was bought on Wayfair. I think it was like $500. It's feathered down inserts, so it's super comfortable. The kitchen table is the original one I bought when I first moved out on my own as a teenager. It was $50 at Ikea and it's holding on strong. <laughs> the dog couch was purchased by a subscriber and the dog even came second hand. He was from the Animal Rescue Foundation. And let's just go ahead and go into the master bedroom. Uh, the master bedroom is very small. It's about 10 by 12. And in terms of furniture, 
This was a family heirloom. It was my great grandmother's, then my grandmother's, then my mother's, now it's mine. And the lamp and side table were also my grandmother's. The painting behind the bed is a picture that I took myself. And then I went online and I just typed in how to turn a picture into canvas and a bunch of websites came up. I did some price comparisons. I keep my wardrobe extremely simple. I don't buy a lot of clothes. That is my pants drawer. Those are my work pants. That is my interview pants. And those are if I have to go and do some dirty gardening or painting. These are my shirts. These are my summer shirts. And these are not shirts, this is just the bottom. So I don't even take up all the room in terms of shirts. The top drawer is my underwear drawer and the bottom drawer is my pajama drawer. No big deal, I get all my pajamas for a dollar or less at the thrift store. This is my winter wardrobe. Uh, there are two shirts in the wash, so um, just keep that in mind. And this hanger is for the robe, which I'm wearing right now. <laughs> and that's all that I really have in terms of clothes. But when I bought this house, in order to have a cheap $67,000 house, you need something that needs repairs. This was in pretty bad disrepair. Non-functional kitchen, non-functional fireplace, and one out of two non-functional bathrooms. This bathroom I completely redid. Uh, it was just cement floor with a really nasty toilet. The toilet's the same, but I cleaned it. Peel and stick tile, it's like 30 bucks. Uh, it cost me like 30 bucks to put in the tile. The vanity was one of those scratch indent ones, so it was on clearance for like a hundred bucks. And the scratch is on the back, so you can't tell. People always ask me how I don't spend a million dollars on, I don't know, haircuts and stuff, whatever. Uh, I just buy the cheapest shampoo, 88 cents each. I buy the cheapest soap, and that's all I really need. Shampoo, conditioner, soap, a razor, and exfoliating gloves. That's all you need, folks. There's not a lot to it. And uh, yeah, this bathroom has been completely, I just think it looks pretty. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy. Let me fix that. There we go. I do think, like to keep things organized and neat and in order. And I don't like a lot of stuff on my walls, <laughs> as you can see. I'm not quite a minimalist, but I am definitely anti-clutter, anti-hoard. This guy, big cutie. The kitchen, when I got here, it was also unusable. Um, this is a remodeled kitchen, did most of it myself, but anyway, I don't wanna get into that. This fridge is a 10.8 cubic foot, it, or sorry, 11.1. .1. It can fit a 14, but I just decided to go smaller in order to save electricity, and it's really served me well. So if you look under me, there is a step that goes down, and this is where it used to be the entrance to the garage in this little doorway, and this was all the garage um, right here, which is the guest room now. At one point it was a garage, then it turned into a duplex, which is why there's a second door. Um, and when I got here, there was no closet because there used to be a unpermitted kitchenette in the closet. Anyway, um, all of the furniture in here, most of it was free. Um, I had somebody send me the bed <laughs> in, the, in the linens. I, I've, it was a great subscriber and I thank them very much as well as the console. The TV was a throwaway from a friend. The chair in the corner was my grandmother's. It's got a feathered seat and it's very comfortable. The nightstand in the middle was my nightstand growing up that my mom got at a yard sale. I've had it ever since. That is just an extra chair that I have uh, from my table set. The nightstands and lamps and painting I did buy new in order to, as well as the mirrors, I did buy new in order to stage my previous house uh, before I sold it. In California, when I came here, there were no doors on the closet because they had just ripped, ripped out the kitchenette. And behind the closet doors, there is an entrance to the piping, the, the plumbing, uh, for the bathroom that is over here, which I don't even know if this bathroom's permitted. <laughs> so in here we've got this giant three foot garden tub, which all of my friends and family say is epic, <laughs> which is which is great unless you're the one cleaning it. Um, it it's just overly sized um, for for this 
little house. It's kind of like I have the Berenstain Bears thing going on. My other bathroom, like the, the bathtub is too small, this one's too big, and I need one that's just right. But it, until that happens, you know, I, I can deal with the epic bathtub, which I use not very regularly because of the drought. Uh, I use the shower instead. This is also one of the paintings that I uh, took a picture myself, had it made onto canvas. And then this one with the with these guys, my neighbor took that picture. I had it put on canvas. This is just an internet meme and you guys can go ahead and pause it if you'd like. It's actually a really fun little read and I read it when I am in the bathtub. And here is another fun little read, The Dalai Lama, The Paradox of Our Age. That's a really fun one. And um, we've just got this closet, which I'm, I'm guessing used to hold like tools and stuff for the garage that is no longer a garage. Um, but now it holds my little, my little tiny pantry. So um, then we go outside and we've got, I don't know if there's gonna be too much wind, but there's a 12 by 10 shed out here. And there used to be no fencing and this was all dirt when I first got here. With the exception of this right here. And then a lot of red bricks were stacked over in the corner in the back over there. Um, and I just bought a few more red bricks to make it even on both sides and to make a larger patio. Because anytime you walked past here and you were in the dirt, it hurt. It, it was gravel, it was this stuff. It was gravel. So I moved the gravel, put in a fake lawn uh, and a couch. And I want to get rid of the couch and just get two chairs, but doggone it, Rocky loves that couch. He loves that couch. <laughs> so I'm having a hard time um, finding a reason to get rid of it. So here's the laundry room, which is just a 12 by 10, I believe. Um, and in here is just the washer dryer on the left. And then my little office on the right, which is where I make some of my videos. I got these on clearance for $3.77 per box. I really lucked out on those. So I get to have a fire every single night uh, for the entire winter time. And over here is another stack of wood, which goes quite far back, but you can't see because of the shadow. Over there is more fencing, and it, that's where I keep my garbage and a couple garden tools like shovel, rake, things like that. And over there, you can see where the fence, the fence actually used to end over here, but now I have it going all the way to the front, and there are some fruit trees everywhere. I've got lemons, mandarins, oranges, fig, bananas, and we'll see how those do. Yes. Things do grow in the desert, believe it or not. But this is my little $67,000 house, and this is how I'm able to live below the poverty line is because I paid for this in cash. I took all this, all of the proceeds or sales from my previous house and I just invested it in the stock market right before the stock market uh, took a huge upturn. So I got really lucky on that. But um, yeah, this is this is pretty much it. If if you are looking for a cheap house, there's a few things you should do, and you should always start early because housing is going to get worse and worse and worse as time progresses. I'm actually priced out of most of the market. But um, what you can do, you can look for anything that's less than three bedrooms. So you want two bedrooms or less: two bed, two bath, two bed, one bath. Okay. Another way is to look for anything that has only one bath. So you can have a three bed, one bath, a or just a three bed, one bath, or a two bed, one bath, or a one bed, one bath, anything with one bath. That's gonna save you a huge amount. Anything that doesn't have a garage, that's just gonna immediately take off $50,000 off of the price of the house. Just boom, $50,000 off if you don't have a garage. Um, if you don't have a driveway, that's gonna save you about $20,000. So, um, and then if you have a fixer upper, that's gonna save you a ton of money, a uh, fixer upper. If you can combine all of those, you guys are gonna get a steal like I did. This is a two bed, two bath, no car, uh, no car garage, uh, no um, driveway, and, and it was a big time fixer upper, wasn't that right? So let's go ahead and take a look at my monthly bills and I'll show you how I'm able to live below the poverty line. So the poverty, the poverty line last estimate was $12,660 per year for a single individual. Um, I spend $10,650.96. Let's move this a little bit closer. A little bit closer here so you all can see it. I even made it in big letters for you. 
So medical, I have Colonial Health for $216.90 a month. I donate $200 at minimum uh, to the Animal Rescue Foundation and HopeForPaws.org. I spend an average of $92. That was over, uh, estimated over the last 12 months. It's likely to go up in 2022. My car and home insurance are bundled with AAA for $75 a month, and that includes two cars. I have a 24-year-old Toyota Camry and a 7-year-old Toyota Corolla. Both have less than 85,000 miles on them. Electric averaged over 63.36 over 12 months. Sometimes it's in the 30s and sometimes it's 130. Uh, it just depends on the weather, but here, because it's the Mojave Desert, it's usually higher in the summer. Uh, I put in $50 for miscellaneous because everybody always asks what about, what about, what about every single time, even though I explain every single time that I just don't spend money like other people. Um, but I put in miscellaneous just for whatever. Um, last month I only went out with, I went out with a couple of my girlfriends. I only went out twice, but uh, one time didn't cost us anything, any, any of us. The other time was I spent $8 on, pi $8 on pizza and $5 on a tip. So that's $13 for the month. Uh, internet is $37.99. I have it through Pioneer or, or Patriot. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Pioneer or Patriot, but I did have sudden link and with internet, I'm more than willing to pay $75, $85 if I get the service and I had sudden link and it just, it went out 10 times a day and I, they wouldn't fix it. My property taxes are $37.18. Um, if you don't believe me, I did show a copy of my property taxes in one of my shorts. So go ahead and check out my shorts. It'll show. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sewer, $34.85. Car gas is maybe $30. I have a full-time job, but my job is only about three miles away from my house. So um, not a lot of driving going on. And I do ride my electric bike quite a bit. Garbage is $15.44, but it's paid quarterly. Cell phone is $15 a month with Mint Mobile. I hope that I have answered all of your questions, and I hope that this will inspire you to live uh, on as little as possible. I mean, some people are living in sheds and tiny homes, and this is a, a real house. It's not a mobile home. It's not a trailer. It's not a shed. This is a real house in a real neighborhood, in a real community. Um, and the population here is over 45,000, I believe. So it's not exactly a small town. Um, and if I can do it, you guys can do it. I hope that you have all enjoyed a tour of my small and simple home, maybe picked up some ideas on how you can stretch your dollars or maybe change some of your subscriptions and services in order to save on your monthly expenses. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like learning different ways to live on an extremely low income, that is all we do here. I hope that you consider hitting the subscribe button so that you do not miss our videos where we post money saving videos once or twice every week. My prayers are with you all. Take care everybody. And don't forget to do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.